four, uh, three men and a baby, uh, the good mother, I mean, all kinds of things, right? Now he's an executive producer and star of an incredible new movie, which he felt he was compelled to make. It's called Never Forget, which will premiere on TNT on April 8th. Let's watch a little scene from it. Mr. Marmoskine, why do you choose to make speeches about something that happened almost 40 years ago? Why do you continue to do that? So that people will never forget what we've done to each other, what the human race is capable of. And because I made a promise. Promise? What promise? In Auschwitz, it was a promise that I made to my father. Boy, will you please welcome, and then I feel like a fool wearing these ears now after that, will you please welcome Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Great, how are you? The, the film is incredible. Thank you. The premise is that they're now trying to say some people that, that uh, the Holocaust never happened. Yeah. How, yeah. how can they even say that? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a very valid question. How can they say that? Uh, this is a, an organization of neo-Nazi, Holocaust, revisionist deniers. Uh, if you ask them about the people who died, they will tell you, yes, a lot of people died. But none were murdered by Nazis. They will tell you that people died from malnutrition because there was a lack of food. They will tell you that there was Allied bombing, which was indiscriminate. They'll say and it killed German people too, and then, but it uh, killed people in concentration camps by accident. And they will tell you that there was a lot of typhus, which there was. But uh, they refused to accept the idea that there were gas chambers. In spite of the fact that we have uh, physical proof that there were, and that there were thousands of people every day uh, being gassed to death, they, they deny it. This, this, uh, uh, I took on this job because this happens to be a Holocaust story with a happy ending. I don't think we've ever seen one of those before. Yeah, it yeah. works out right. The good guys win in this one. Isn't that a pleasure for a change? <laughs> right. Well, the good guys win in your life. It's, your yeah. life is a charmed life. You really are very lucky. You've yeah. gone, you go on and on and on and keep doing better and better and better things. Thank you. you know? right. I've had a great time. And, I, I mean, people ask me if I resent being identified with Star Trek and Spock, the answer is flat no. It's been a great door opener for me. It's a great opportunity to do a lot of interesting work. And that's, that's I mean, like, even this now, do you get, you, they seem <laughs> to have some of the merchandise in there. <laughs> they look great on you, Joan. Thank you. They look great. Even You're very, Joan very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you get a piece every time a fool such as me buys these? Did you I don't make know. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> if you wear them often enough, I might make a lot of money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do, know. Do the Trekkies still bother you? Like, um, do they still keep coming after you? And, and no, uh, no. I tell you, um, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, I, in the 60s, it was kind of tough. When the show was first on the air during the late 60s, it was kind of tough. You'd have to make arrangements to get in and out of restaurants and in and out of theaters and public places and stuff like that. It's not bad now. People are reasonable. When did they realize that you could do more than just that, that you could direct? And who will let you have your first director? Well, I tell you, I started directing very early, actually, but... Uh, but Seriously, feature direction. So, see, Spock died in Star Trek II. Yes, I wonder if you remember that. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then they decided, well, I think we'd like to have Spock back, they said. So, uh, they called me and they said, I went in for a meeting at Paramount and they said, um, we'd like to know if you would like to be involved in any way in the making of Star Trek III. And, of course, they wanted me in the movie. Right. And I said, I would like to direct the picture. And guess what? You know, they made me a director. And that, that was your first, your first time? That was my first feature, yeah. I had done some, some television direction, but it was my first feature. Were you frightened? I mean, that's I was nervous. Yeah. I yeah. was nervous. I think it'd be crazy not to be. Uh, it was, for me, a big deal. It was a $15 million movie and a lot of responsibility. Yeah, just, what was the biggest mistake you made? When I saw I've been taking the job. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't know. I don't know. I've made I've, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've had a, I've had a very lucky run. You know, Star Trek Three worked, and I did Star Trek Four, which is a story about the whales. We had a good time with that one. It was a very successful. And picture. Three Men and a Baby. Three Men and a Baby was a very lucky, wonderful experience. Why? And I don't 
mean to sound negative, but I never think of you, you know, as a humorous person. Yeah. You know, you go, oh, Leonard Nimoy's going to be there. Well, just don't even try to put food in your mouth. <laughs> oh, stop it, Lenny. <laughs> yeah. How did they get you, and it was such a success, what made them think about you as a comedy director? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there was some humor in Star Trek IV. And uh, somebody, uh, uh, Jeff Kastenberg, I think, at Disney, enjoyed the picture and laughed and said, I think you can do a comedy. It's incredible. And hired me. Did you ever have fights with, with the, the comedians that they said you're wrong? You know, the three we, actors? No, it is no, funny, Leonard. No, no. What do you know about no, funny, no, Leonard? No, 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 you know, no, no, they, no, they did what they were told. They're, no, they're good guys. These are very good, talented, professional people. You know, they're fun to work with. The baby was great. It was a miraculous production. Everything happened just exactly right. How long, when you work with a baby, you have to wait, what? You can only do it like... You, you, you talk to the mother a lot. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. say, I need a sleeping baby, I need a crying baby, I need a hungry baby, I need a happy baby. Right. So she says, okay, tomorrow at 10 o'clock the baby will be sleeping. At 2 o'clock the baby will be hungry. At 4 o'clock the baby will wet. You know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you go, wait a second, you missed up on 2 and 4 here. <laughs> it all worked out very well. So you well. have what, two children or three children? I have two children and I have three and a half grandchildren. Three, three and a half grand, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which one did the car commercial with? My daughter. Yeah. Yeah. One is a boy, one is a girl. And I, yeah, I have a daughter and a son. My daughter is in the Oldsmobile commercial. Well, I'm in the Oldsmobile commercial with her. Yeah. She's yeah. the star. Who yeah. got the car? We both did. That's yeah, we very did. nice. Yeah, yeah. Who did you deal with over there? Because Melissa drives, you know. <laughs> I just... I just <laughs> it's John. Bad, it You can have my car. That's you can have my car anytime. But they, and you're remarried. Just now. call up and let me know when you Just want to. Just call up and say, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, now, I'm remarried, yes. Tell me about, again, just to go back to the movie. It's a very sexy show you do here. Yes, I know. You can feel it. I was, I, I you thought can feel to myself, the tension. Yeah, no, I thought to myself, I'm standing backstage there and listening to all this stuff, and I thought, what kind of... What kind of sex questions is yeah. she going to ask uh, me? Let me, me ask, all right, let me ask you. No, 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 don't ask uh, me. Oh, too bad. <laughs> too bad. First of all, do you ever have uh, sex dreams that don't include your wife? <laughs> you ask for well, it. I saw you ask these people or this yes. lady here, and she said, yes, I do. Sex uh, dreams that don't include her husband. Yeah. Can you uh, tell your husband? No. No. No, oh, I saw that. Very wise. Very good answers. Yes or no. What about, do you have sex dreams that what? don't include your wife? I have trouble hearing, John. <laughs> my hearing is very bad. I don't have my pointed ears uh, on. They're what? all being sharpened. These what? are the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked you about three men and a baby. Let me, let me ask you a question. What about Spock? Will he ever have sex? I have to ask him. Well, if you get to do the next movie, but it's number six. It's number this six. is number six. Yeah, we're going to shoot it uh, next month. We start shooting next month. It'll be in the theaters next December. You want to buy a ticket? Uh, if you I can't it, tell you what I the can, story is. I, I can can't drive tell you. you I can drive there in your own wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you what the story is, but I think it's going to be a fun movie. Oh, I, anything you do, though, I know it's, it's first rate. Thank you. Quality, and that goes back to watching you in Minneapolis. Minnesota. You were yeah. there. You I heard there about that. How actor. nice of you to come to see that play. Well, I was doing Vincent. I yeah. think you're a wonderful actor. I Thank think you. Uh, TNT April 8th. Let me just make sure I say it right. It is called exactly Never Forget. And you. it's going to be just a terrific movie. Thank you. Bring your hankies when you go into it. Thank you. And we'll be right back with a couple who learn to share their sexual erotic dreams. Mm -hmm.